Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh So today we are going to talk about the geometric design of landing area part 2 in our airport design class in 10th meeting So there are three parts of geometric design of landing area The first is geometric design of runway the second is for taxiway and the last is for upfront. And for the last meeting, we already talked about geometric design of runway. So today, we are going to talk about geometric design of taxiway and geometric design of apron. So there are some components that we will learn about the geometric design of taxiway the first is minimum wheel clearance width of taxiway longitudinal slopes and changes side stains transfer slope taxiway shoulder taxiway strip rapid exit taxiway taxiway intersection taxiway minimum separation distances and holding bay and taxi holding position so there are some basic concept design of taxiway the first is increase pilot situational awareness so a pilot should have to know where he or she in the airport so don't make the taxiway system complicated because complexity will lead the pilot to a confusion and we as an airport designer should have to make the taxiway system simple using three node concept so what is three node concept so the three node concept means that the pilot is a present is present with no more than three choice at an intersection so if we have intersection like this and the direction of an aircraft from here to here so this is the direction from here to here so the pilot will see three choices ideally left so the aircraft maybe turn left or the second turn right or the third is straight ahead and for the straight ahead there are standard values for here for the delta so the standard values are 30 degrees 45 degrees 63 deg degrees or 90 degrees which means it's turn left or turn right so don't make the intersection complicated The next is avoid wide expense of pavement, limit runway crossings, avoid high energy intersections, increase visibility, avoid dual purpose pavements. And this is uh, the explanation why uh, we should have to make the basic concept design of taxiway in some concept. The last for concept design of taxiway is the indirect access. Don't design taxiway to lead directly from an apron to a runway without requiring a turn. Such configurations can lead to confusion when a pilot typically expects to encounter a parallel taxiway but instead accidentally enters a runway. So this is uh, some example for uh, not recommended taxiway intersection so for example this is the terminal apron and this is the taxiway and this is the runway and this is the taxiway and this is also the, ta the taxiway and 
the taxiway direct direct uh, lead directly from a prone to a runway without a turn so it it will just like here from like here from here to here so what we should what should uh, we do if we have some cases like this so and the case is it already constructed it's already done so we can use this alternative so relocate the existing taxiway connector that provide direct access from a parent to runway and move into or build some uh, taxiway connector eliminating direct access from a prone to runway so we re relocate the taxiway from here to here so it won't be uh, the direct access from terminal a prone to runway and the second is like this this is the terminal up round. This is the runway. So this is uh, directly from terminal up round to runway. So what we should have to do if the case is like this and the taxiway already down constructed. So we can use like this relocate the existing taxiway connector that provide uh, direct access from a prone to runway so this is the new location of taxiway connector so from terminal a prone the, uh, the, the aircraft should have to be here and then here and here so actually it's not uncommon but if we If we want to uh, make indirect access from a prone to runway, so this first component of geometric design of taxiway is minimum wheel clearance. Actually, change in direction of taxiway should be as few and small as possible. The radius of the curves should be compatible with the maneuvering capability and normal taxiing speeds of the aircraft for which the taxiway is intended. The design of the curve such should be such that when the cockpit of the aircraft remains over the taxiway central line markings. So this is the central line markings of the tax of the taxiway and the cockpit of the aircraft should have to be always in the center line of taxiway like this so even when the aircraft is turning the cockpit should have to be still in the center line markings and it will make the aircraft need the minimum wheel clearance like the like this that we see here so in the turning in a turning there should have to be a minimum wheel clearance like this with extra taxiway width so the clearance distance between the outer main wheels of the aircraft and the edge of the taxiway should not be less than so uh, if this is the main wheels and this is the outer main wheels of the aircraft from here to the edge of taxiway should not be less than it based on the IQ aerodrome reference number from A to F so this is the requirements so this is for the A is if the taxiway is intended to be used by aeroplanes 
with a wheel base less than 18 meters and the B one is if the taxiway is intended to be used by aeroplanes with a wheel base equal to or greater than 18 meters next is width of taxiway a straight portion of a taxiway should have a width of not less than that given by the following tabulation so this is uh, about the taxiway width based on AQ aerodrome reference number so this is the X is from here to here if we have this as taxiway you can see here next is longitudinal slopes in change the longitudinal slope of a taxiway should not exceed this based on IQ aerodrome reference number in percent and where slope change on a taxiway cannot be avoided the transition from one slope to another slope should be accomplished by a curved surface with a rate of change not exceeding like in this table, it also based on the Aero AQ Aerodrome Reference num Number A2F, there are change in slope and radius of curvature. The change in slope is like this, so if this is the G1 in percent and G2 in percent, this is the taxiway, this is the length of taxiway from here to here, and there are slope change this is the first and this is the second so the delta G will be G1 minus G2 and the delta G should not exceeding this and the radius of curvature so there will be a curvature here and the radius is like this for the next is side distance so where a change in slope on a taxiway cannot be avoided the change should be such that from any point so uh, this is based on aero aq aerodrome reference number from a to f and there are item for items for X and Y so what is X and Y so if this is taxiway so in in some in some distance from here to here this is the Y you can see here there are minimum X that we should have to make sure about the side distance here the x is based on here and for the transfer slope so the transfer slopes of a taxiway should be sufficient to prevent the accumulation of water on surface so if we have uh, rainy days or else so the water on the surface of the taxiway uh, can be drained so the transfer slope should not exceed here based on IQ aerodrome reference number 2 from A to F so the maximum elevation is so the maximum E is here so the per uh, so this is on percent like this so for example this is the taxiway width and this is the center line of the taxiway so the E will be not exceed than this the sixth is taxiway shoulder so straight portions of a taxiway where the code letter is C, D, E or F should be provided with shoulders with which extend symmetrically so the taxiway shoulder is 
extend symmetrically from the uh, central line on each side of the taxiway so that the overall width of the taxiway and its shoulders on straight portion is not less than this table this on the aerodrome uh, reference number from A to F so the WS is from here to here so it is include the width of the taxiway so if we have uh, the C to C section like this so this is the shoulder this is the left shoulder this is taxiway width and this is the right shoulder so the WS will be count from here to here so this is the requirement of WS the seventh is taxiway strip so a taxiway strip should extend symmetrically on each side of the center line of the taxiway through the length of the taxiway to at least the distance from the center line given in table below so this is uh, the requirements for SW minimum based on error drum reference number from A to F in meters so this is uh, for SW minimum is from the center line to the edge of the taxiway strip so it is including the half of taxiway width half of taxiway shoulder so it, it is included in the SW minimum and the center portion of a taxiway strip should provide a graded area to a distance from the center line of the taxiway at least so this is the grid the graded portion of taxiway strip from the center line of the taxiway so this is based on aerodrome reference number from a to f the eighth is rapid exit taxiway so there are two items two items uh, the first is radius of turn of curve so a rapid exit taxiway should be designed with a radius of turn of curve at least so this is the radius of turn of curve this is the radius here so this is based on the AQL aerodrome reference number just from A to D here and to enable exit speeds under wet conditions of this so next is taxiway turning and intersection so there are what we call with TDG or taxiway design group so the taxiway will be divided into TDG to make the design easier. So the TDG or taxiway design group is depends on the dimension of the aircraft. There are two components. The first is main gear width and the second is the distance from cockpit to main gear. So for example, if we have an aircraft or the maximum aircraft that should have to be served by the taxiway with the main gear width is 15 feet so it will be here it will be here and if we have the aircraft dimensions from cockpit to main gear is 50 feet so we just plot in the uh, from the table here so it will be on the tdg2 group and basically this is the picture of the taxi of a taxiway turning so this is for taxiway turn this is 
the tech the center line this is the taxiway turn and this is the main gear offset here this is the main gear offset and this is the nose gear offset here this is the nose gear offset so basically uh, there are three line that we should have to think about it and this is the design the basic the basic dimension of the taxiway turning so it is based on the angle so the first one is if the angle is more than 90 degrees and this is for the angle if for the delta is less than 90 degrees here and this is for the taxiway turning with uh, 90 degrees and this is the dimension for example L3, L2, L1, W2, W1, WO and also here and here so the design is based on the delta or the degree of uh, the taxiway turning and this is our fillet RCL and our outer this is the RVL fillet this is the RCL or the center line and this is for the R outer and this is also our fillet RCL and our R outer and here so this is the requirements of the taxiway turning for example this is the TDG 1A or taxiway degree sorry taxiway design group 1A based on the uh, based on the angle in degrees for 30 to 150 so this is the requirements that we should have to design and this is for TDG 1B TDG 3, TDG 2 4, 5, 6 and 7 so all of the dimension was written here like the W, O, W1, W2 L1, L2, L3 R fillet, RCL, and R outer. So first, we should have to make sure where is the TDG or what group the taxiway is. We should have to determine the TDG first or taxiway design group first. The second, we should have to to determine uh, what degree or what angle the taxiway turning after that we just see the table with the requirements then we can design the taxiway turning based on the TDG the degree and this table there are some type of taxiway intersection or some design of taxiway intersection that are not recommended so the first is a taxiway crossing uh, is a taxiway crossing high speed exit and wide throat runway entrance so this is the taxiway the rapid exit taxiway here but there are a taxiway that crossing the rapid exit taxiway and this is a dangerous one because uh, if an aircraft using the uh, rapid exit taxiway it will be in a uh, high speed and if the coordination between the pilot and the air traffic controller is 
have a miscommunication it will be in a dangerous one the next is extra wide throat takes away leading from the apron di directly to parallel taxiways and runway here this is the extra wide throat taxiway and because of this it will be lead uh, a direct movement from a prone to runway basically it's not if there isn't uh, the extra wide throat throw taxiway it won't be a a direct access from a prone to runway but it is because the extra wide throat it makes uh, the access direct from a prone to runway next taxiway intersection exit three node concept so this is a very much node so uh, it may it m it will make the pilot confused next is taxiway intersecting multiple runways so if we have some runways in the air side and there are intersection multiple intersection it will be dangerous too so for example this is the runway this is the runway and this is the runway so basically if we have uh, two if we have one intersecting runways for so if we have two runways and it is intersecting it is okay but if we have more than two runways and all of the runways is in is it has an intersection so it will be dangerous next a line takes away between two closely spaced runway ends so this is uh, the space runway ends next is two or more taxiway entrance lacking no taxi island so this is uh, lacking no taxi island next is y shaped taxiway crossing a runway so this is a runway this is a y shaped taxiway that will crossing the runway so it will be dangerous also the tenth is taxiway minimum separation distance so there are some requirements about the separation distance the first is for the distance between the center line of a taxiway and the center line of a runway the second is the center line of a parallel taxiway or an object that should not be less than the appropriate dimension speci specified in the table, table beside so this is the taxiway minimum separation distance so it is based on the code letter a b c d e f and the distance between taxiway center line and runway center line divided into two the first is for instrument runway and the second is for non-instrument runways and also divided into uh, divided based on the code number one two three four one two three four for non-instrument runways so this is the requirements for distance between taxiway center line and runway center line in meters and this is for the separation distance between taxiway center line to taxiway center line so if uh, there is parallel taxiway and this is for taxiway other than aircraft stand taxi land center line to object and the last is for aircraft stand taxi land center line to object in meters 
so this is the calculation how we get the di separation distance the first is the separation distance between the center line of a taxiway and the center line of a runway so this is the visualization if we have a runway here and a taxiway here so the separation between runway and taxiway is half multiplied by SW and WS so SW is runway strip width like this from the strip width in the left to the right here and the WS is wingspan wingspan is from here to here so the separation distance between runway and taxiway is from here to here So this is how we can uh, calculate the separation distance of the center line of taxiway and center line of runway. But uh, for instance, we already given uh, the table in the s in in a slide before. Next is the separation distance between the center line of a parallel taxiway. So, for example, this is a taxiway and this is a taxiway, or what we call with parallel taxiway. So, the, dis uh, the STT is the separation distance between taxiway and taxiway. The calculation is WS, or the wingspan, plus D minimum, or the clearance between main gear outer wheels and taxiway edge the d minimum is the d minimum is uh, based on the aerodrome code letter so this is for uh, code letter d e f code letter c code letter p and code letter a and the z z is wingtip clearance which uh, we can see the wingtip clearance here based on the iq aerodrome reference number in meters so this is the STT. Next is the separation distance between the center line of a taxiway or center line of apron and any object. So uh, we have STO here is half multiplied by WS plus U1 and C2. So WS for wingspan, U1 is for taxiway edge safety margin, and the C2 is minimum wingtip object clearance. This is based on the aerodrome code letter here. So, like, uh, so this is the visualization. So this is runway. This is taxiway this is a prone taxiway and this is aircraft stand taxi lane so as for the srt or the distance between the center line of runway and the center line of taxiway is here from here to here and stt or separation distance between taxiway to taxiway this is taxiway this is also taxiway but because it is uh, near the apron, direct to the apron, so it also called by apron taxiway. So this is the STT. So the STO is the center line of taxiway or the center line of apron taxiway with any object. So we can uh, we have object here. We have terminal building and we have aircraft here. So the STO. The clearance distance is STO here. And the last is the separation distance between aircraft stand taxi lane and any object. The visualization the visualization is here. This is the SATO from the aircraft stand taxi lane to the, any object. In this case is aircraft. So the 
calculation is half multiplied multiplied by ws plus u2 plus z and this is ws for wingspan w2 for aircraft stand safety margin it is near uh, 1.5 to 2.5 meters and for the z is wingtip clearance that uh, we can get it from here the last is holding bay and taxi holding position so holding base should be provided when the traffic density is medium or heavy and a runway holding position or position shall be established the first is on the taxiway at the intersection of a taxiway and a runway and at an intersection of a runway with another runway when the former runway is part of a standard taxi route so this is uh, the requirements for holding bay and taxi holding position based on the code uh, code number one two three four and it is also based on the type of the runway for example non-instrument non-precision approach precision approach category one precision approach categories two and this is uh, the other requirements